He has directed only six films in his career and all of them are hits. The man with a 100% success rate. Here we have Rajkumar Hirani. Welcome to Edit TV, sir. Nice to be here, Avira. <laughs> okay, let me start with this because this happened recently that uh, the consulate of uh, various nations uh, attended a screening of Dunkey here in Mumbai. So how overwhelming was that, you know, showing a film like Dunkey to different kinds of people from different parts of the world? So actually, you know, uh, uh, whenever we subtitle our film, so we actually put in a lot of effort to subtitle the film because people in America are seeing it, people across the world. And whatever best you do, even in English, sometimes the language is slightly different there. So we had invited some uh, people from the consulate, from the US consulate and UK consulate to help us on the subtitle. I said, we want you to see the subtitles that we've created. And uh, so that people in US don't feel that. So they came while we were still editing. So at a very rough editing stage, about 10, 12 people saw the So Abhijat was sitting with them and working on the this thing. So Abhijat told me that it was a uh, amazing reaction in an editing stage, editing stage where the music is not there. Some of the dialogues were missing. And they were crying and laughing. So uh, they obviously went back. And then as the film released, they also realized it's a film about immigration. It's about visas. It's, it's the kind of work they do. So I started getting calls from some people that uh, we want to see the film. And is it possible to see a subtitle print in India? So then we invited. So there were about 20 countries, people from consul generals, some assistant consul generals. And a lot of them came yesterday to watch that film. And I was really stressed that how the reaction is going to be because in a way you are uh, uh, talking of the work they do about visas and about the problems with visas. But it was pretty overwhelming after they saw the film and uh, uh, they came out and uh, some of them very willingly came out and gave their bites. We said we want to talk about it. Some are diplomats, so they don't want to <laughs> talk about it. But uh, uh, what universally came out was, he says, yeah, this is something we need to think about there needs to be a debate about uh, uh, the way visas are distributed. So there needs to be, he said, we never saw it like this. And they were very curious that how come here in India, we decided to make a film like this? How, how did this come to your mind? So in fact, today I got a lot of messages saying that we want to meet you to understand what made you do this film. Also, I should mention this, that, you know, since Dunkey released, the real life Dunkey stories have been on the rise. Or is it us noticing it now? Uh, because recently we saw, and it made headlines, a chartered plane carrying 276 Indian passengers were grounded in uh, France uh, of suspected human trafficking. So what is it? Is Are we, are we noticing it now because we, are, uh, we have watched Dunkey? It you, always used to happen. What is it? These, so these news, has they have been in circulation every month. There's not a month which passes that such kind of people crossing borders is not in news. It's just that because now we are aware of something like this, so it comes more into news and it grabs our attention that, uh, oh, something like this is happening. The, as the film is set in 1995, all the flashback portion. So that is the time. Uh, see, like now, India has many countries where you have visa on arrival. So the, donk, the, the route, the method to go illegally immigrate has changed. In the 90s, what they used to do, or in the 80s, what they used to do, they would literally cross borders from, get from India to Pakistan to Afghanistan, uh, go to Turkey, from there cross over in a boat to Greece, from Greece cross over to Italy, and then reach France, Port Calais, and from there go. So that was one route which was called the donkey route. Uh, then sometimes they go via Russia also. Now what has happened is, since you have visa on arrival, like what is happening in this news you are reading. So these people were being taken to, not France, they're not coming from France. France, the flight was intercepted. They were being taken to a, a Nikago now. Some, some, they will be taken to a country where there's no uh, visa required, as in visa on arrival. So if you have a passport, you can reach there. So they would get down there. And from there, they will then cross borders and go into Europe. So the method has changed. But if you go to Punjab, it is a very commonly used phrase. You go to Punjab and say, Dunki Lagani, matlab they know. Every, everybody in that uh, state would know that Dunki Lagani ka matlab hai ki donkey route se illegally jana hai. You know, sir, we know for a fact that you do your research very well before you uh, start a film. Like so many years of research. But what I wanted to ask is for this film, 
what kind of research did you do? If you can share some real life stories, like people whom you have met who have got stuck on the way, had to come back or, you know, have reached uh, London and couldn't come back from there, you know, back to their country. What kind of real life stories uh, can you share with us? There are many stories I have. Uh, like people who can't come back, I know somebody, I still didn't know that. I've met that person. Uh, so I was in New York and I was with a friend and he took me in a car with another friend of his. And uh, while he was turning his car, uh, suddenly something happened and I could see major panic on his face. I said, what happened? Then I saw there was a cop ahead of, he was like 100 meters ahead of him. And this guy was panicking. He said, maybe I've, I've taken a wrong turn. Maybe I had this thing. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, even if you've taken a wrong turn, so what? It's like a, okay, you've done a, it's a traffic, this thing, it'll be a little fine or a uh, ticket or whatever. But he started sweating. I didn't, that day I didn't understand what was happening. It was much later I realized that guy had traveled illegally. Uh, so he was constantly, up, so there were obviously no papers. He was constantly scared of any, any interaction with any cop. Deport kar denge. So what these guys do actually from my research, what I understood was the method is whatever way you reach illegally, once you enter that country, you destroy every evidence, every ID you have saying that you are from this country, your name, your if you are, if you're having a passport, you destroy that, any ID you destroy and you go and surrender. Most of them would actually, some of them will hide, but mostly they'll, they're okay if they are caught also by the border police. And when the border police ask them, Naam kya hai? what's your name? So they'll say, we want asylum. Where are you from? We want asylum. They can't hit them. They can't. They take them to a detention center. Then they call up from the face. They can make out ki either he's an Indian or a Pakistani. And then they'll call, call people from the embassy. They'll come and talk to them. In some time, the embassy people will figure out he's from India or from Pakistan, wherever. But he will not reveal from which city he is. Uh, where does he come from? Now, how do you hand over? How does the country accept him? So the embassy has to, in six months, prove, figure out his identity, that he's from this one little remote village of Punjab. This is his identity. So that the country can say, okay, he's an Indian, we take him back. So that doesn't happen in six months. It's impossible to figure out where is he. And if you can't figure that out in six months, then that country has to give you some kind of an, like I can tell you many stories of, uh, uh, in fact, even spoke to some people who were in the journey. Uh, wow. In fact, one actor came to audition when he heard the story and uh, he said, Aray, ye to, uh, Punjab ki he was from Punjab. So, uh, uh, I said, he, he said, bhai is wakt Mexico ke hai, wo hai. and he made me speak to him on the phone. He said, haan, paji, abhi haan, tine din se hon, tine attempt kar chuka hon. Actually, if you Google, you'll see so many videos, so many videos of made by these um, guys. That... You know, in one of uh, Shah Rukh Khan's Twitter session, Ask SRK, he was asked that how difficult was it to uh, play a guy from a village who doesn't know English because, you know, his English is impeccable. And then you also have Woman Irani who is even better. Um, so how difficult was it? It's for you to make them unlearn the English because, you know, the accent, when you speak very well, you have an accent also. So they have to unlearn all those things and behave like they don't know English, right? They don't know how to speak. How difficult was that? No, obviously, uh, Charuk used to laugh and he says, you know, mostly people have cast me as the urban guy and I speak such perfect English. And now you're making me play a role where I don't know English at all. So, of course, that was possibly the most challenging part for him. But the amount of effort he used to put is not funny. He used to rehearse so much. He used to rehearse so much. And in spite of that, sometimes it will slip in. Sometimes it will slip in. So, Why mistakes are he bold enough? Uh, but uh, he's a man who doesn't shy away from retakes. Even if you've got a good take, he'll say, one try. Karte. He keeps, keeps on working on it. Keeps on. I know it's very difficult to become uh, uh, somebody else. And uh, when it's not naturally you... You know, one more performance that people can't get enough of is Vicky Kaushal. We wish we had seen him a little more in the film because what fantastic performance and a beautiful story also. Um, I hope uh, you guys come together again to make a full-fledged film because we want more of Vicky and Rajkumar Hirani coming together. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, in fact, I was not offering him this. Uh, uh, it just happened by chance. Uh, so I wanted all new people for these roles, like Bali, Bugu, Sukhi. So uh, Vicky's father, Sham Koshal, he did the action for this film. So he was hearing the script and I see casting ki baat nikli. Kis kisam ka ladka hona chahiye iske liye? Maine kaha iske liye to Vicky jaisa koi hona chahiye, but I will never offer the role to him because it's a small role. And uh, you know, just because he's done one Sanju, and so now he's become he's doing absolutely lead roles. So I will never offer it to him. He didn't say anything. That night, I got a call from Vicky saying, "Aise kaise ho sakta? Apne aise kaise bol diya dad ko ki uh, uh, main offer nahi karunga. Main kal aa raha hu. Mujhe sunao kani." So he came, and it was kind of him to uh, have done that role, and it made us see how a good actor can make a difference, and it made the biggest difference to the film. And then there is Tapsi, who speaks so well in Punjabi and was perfect for this role. But was she your first choice, or you had her in mind when you were writing the film? Uh, what was the casting like? Tapsi, I happened to see her film while this script was being written. I just happened to see Manmarziya, where she plays a similar uh, uh, girl from Punjab, middle class, with Vicky. In fact, she's there in the film. So you know, I was in the phase of uh, uh, writing the script, and I saw this film. I said she's absolutely right. So I took out a lot of scenes from that, and though I didn't tell her for a long time, I didn't meet her, and uh, I used to keep seeing those scenes. And does she fit in? Does she fit in? And within the office, kind of a lot of people knew that we're thinking about her, and uh, it started coming in news somewhere that Tapsi is being cast. Though we had not really spoken, then finally I one day called her. I said, "Look, I'm news. Me, so I got. So let's meet in it. Have a role. Come and hear it." So she is just apt for that role, that Punjabi, you know, small town girl. And so, can we say that media can take the credit of Tapsi being casted in Donkey? Yes, <laughs> you should. So media takes the credit for casting Tapsi, Tapsi. in Rajkumar Rani's <laughs> film. Yes. <laughs> so, so when a, a film of yours releases, how do you measure its success? Do you uh, do you check box office uh, reports? Uh, do you listen to reviews, or do you depend on people personally sending you messages or your loved ones? How do you measure the success of of your film? I actually totally depend on uh, what people tell me, how they talk to me uh, from the messages, and I actually don't even. Uh, I try to read between the lines. <laughs> because people can tell you the most lovely things but you have to really read between the lines you have to read between the messages and say okay are they saying this or are they just being polite are they messaging that because they have to message so you have to really decipher these things and uh, so i don't depend on uh, uh, too much on the social media you really can't judge you don't know now there's so much of comments so much from every side reviews Maybe it's also personal tastes. I feel you know somebody can. It's like you have a personal taste for food, so it's very different to judge really from that. Uh, so I do look at it sometimes, but I completely depend on what people are saying, and that always happens. There'll be a section which will uh, uh, like it, uh, somebody who won't like it. With every film, it's happened. Now in hindsight, we look back and say, ah, PK was like this. But I remember, still remember the kind of reviews I got for that. Even for three idiots, I remember. I was very stressed. Last scene, nobody used to like that childbirth scene. Said, How is it possible? Eight, nine minutes you're showing this childbirth, and who does a climax like this? And who does? Uh, how can you say all is well and the baby starts kicking? There was major and was very stressed over it. But over time, then you rationally start seeing the film. You know, in the in the first week, there's a euphoria of everybody wants to comment. So you have to let it die down, let it die down, and then the kind of film emerges, and then you see what. Reactions you get. Okay, so my last question: What took Shah Rukh Khan and Rajkumar Hirani so long to come together to make a film? See, he was supposed to do Munna Bhai MBBS. Then his all those spine issues happened. It got delayed. There was a small budget film. We had to still go and make it. Uh, so since then, we've kept we kept meeting every you know we, whenever we met, we said we have to do a film together. But I do so little film that somehow it never it never happened. You know. And so after Sanju, I remember we met and uh, we said, "Ab, so we have to film. We will film together. Ab, whatever will happen, we will film together." So this was the time where we started saying, "Okay, we have to find a script where you will do." So I was working on multiple subjects. Shahrukh liked this one, 
so then i said okay we are doing it unlike you know you write a script and then you say okay this one is this time it was decided we are going to work together period is ab nahi karenge to kab karenge so it happened like that thank you so much sir thank you for talking to us thank you so much lovely talking to you seriously <laughs>